Hello viewers and welcome to my new video. Uh, in today's video uh, I would like to uh, share with you uh, my own techniques uh, of how to prepare for a live performance. So say you're in a band or you're a you know solo artist or a DJ or whichever you know type of type of performance. Uh, you, even if you're an actor and you know things like that, I'm sure that uh, um, you might benefit from from this video and from this advice uh you know having having played live for quite a number of years you know i've i've, I've played various different gigs and you know for which i prepared you know sometimes better sometimes not not perhaps good enough but definitely i've uh, learned my lessons and uh, you know i've always had this approach where uh, i've always been actively thinking about what that performance uh you know is going to look like uh you know and it's and it's not just a, a run random thing so effectively what i'm trying to say here is that uh you know you you, you can approach it in in two different ways uh so the first way would be uh you just want to play your instrument well or you want to just sing well you know so effectively you just practice 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 your your kind of uh, uh you know your your craft and then you go out there, you stand on the stage and you deliver that craft. OK, so that would be the first approach. Uh, however, the, the, I, I think personally, uh, the problem with that approach is that all you do is then, yes, you present your sort of skills or talents to people. Perfect. OK, but sometimes. And, and that's the approach number two. Um, what I think is important is that you think about the communication aspect of it because i think when you when you perform live effectively you communicate with your audience and not just through music uh, of course you communicate through music as well but you need to be thinking about uh, everything that will be going on during that time when people will, will be watching you okay so uh, it's not it's not just about you sort of performing your your craft but it's what what happens around that you know what atmosphere you want to convey what messages you want to convey that kind of thing how do you want to make people feel you know so everything uh, uh, you know comes into play here now there will be some things that you will have no control over so it's important to remember this as well because uh, for example you might be playing in a venue where you you have no control over say what the stage looks like or what the actual lighting in, in the venue will look like or that kind of thing you know you might not have uh, any control sometimes you if you have any props for example like to bring with you on stage and you use them regularly then of course you can sort of dress up uh you know your stage you know for example to to your liking you know so sort of prepare it if if that's the, the sort of thing that you do um you know but 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 it's but some of these things you will have no control over you know especially if you're not um you know a, a very big artist you know who can have a say over basically everything and there's a big preparation like you can get together with other people in advance or so the sound the sound person the uh lighting person all these different things for example to discuss all these different aspects you know if you just turn up effectively at the venue then uh, you have limited control over some of this however the things that you do have control uh, over i think that you should definitely invest in uh, making them as good as you can and like i said earlier to convey as as your message or your you know your 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 emotional sort of uh throughput as best as you can okay one of the inspirations that i got actually for making this video is something that it made me actually realize that you know sometimes when you when you know what you know you don't always realize that other people don't necessarily know this but actually somebody who is a quite a, i would say a well-established artist on, on instagram uh, so uh, actually posted a, a you know uh, a post recently asking people because she actually has never played live she's been kind of uh, you know writing songs writing music in in her own uh, home 
and sort of you know making a lot of different things kind of visually you know on online but she hasn't actually played live so she was actually asking a genuine question you know would people what would people recommend and how to prepare for you know a live performance so that actually made me think that would be a good idea you know to to do a video on this uh, and hopefully as many people as as possible uh, will be will be able to also get that uh, advice so the first thing that i would recommend that you do is to decide on the length of your set okay because say as a band or as an artist or whatever you know you might have um you know you might have 20 songs 25 songs for example written already you know and that kind of thing however what you need to be thinking of is and i've seen this before i've seen people actually make mistakes on these things is that they just wanted to play everything that they ever have written, rehearsed, and that kind of thing. So the moment they turn up to a venue for it, and, and if, if that is of course allowed, because sometimes there will be situations where you will just be told, and that's also fine, and you need to know, you need to work within those parameters. So for example, if you are told that you only will have 30 minutes slot to play your set, then of course you need to you need to do your set that will last for 30 minutes, you know, so that's another task actually, is to, to actually... Um, time your songs and then and then all uh, allow for some gaps in between the songs as well and sort of time it nicely so that you won't overrun you know because what you don't want to do uh, is you know make anybody sort of cross or annoyed with you because oh they told you 30 minutes and you've played for 40 minutes especially when uh, there is a there is a very tight schedule say of of artists or bands sort of uh, playing one after another you know so so that that's always important to keep in mind uh, but for example if you were a, a headlining artist and if you were given say an, an unlimited time for example to play then again that's and that's within your gift then and that's within your control so what you can do is you can do one of one of two things you can and I've seen sometimes people do that, and I I don't always think this is the best idea, but I've seen some people who basically took like their entire repertoire, and then just wanted to share it so much with people that they would just play say for I don't know an hour and a half or or that kind of uh, time you know but I pers so it all depends of course you know if if say if you are Bruce Springsteen or you are that kind of level of an artist and you've got so many of these hits you know that people know and recognize and and perhaps they want you to play them and and also you know perhaps they want value for money so perhaps they want you know I've paid so much for my ticket to co to come to your concert you know I don't just want to see you play say for 30 minutes or an hour even i may want i went i may want to expect you to play for two hours or longer you know there are there are examples of bands like like say foo fighters they always like i think used to play like really long sets and things like that so i think it all depends depends on the circumstances and what, how big of an artist you are and that kind of thing but say if you are not uh bruce springsteen or foo fighters or similar uh, you know um uh, lev level of of an artist then perhaps you need to ask yourself well how do i want to leave my audience feel so for example what you could do is you could have an approach that will um leave them sort of want more you know so you you show them your best tracks so effectively you play your best tracks to them that you obviously choose uh, of on your on your set list and you ba you basically play that and you play for a length of time that is enough to make them feel that they've received what they came for but at the same time sort of wanting them uh, sort of leaving them wanting more uh, as well you know so it's almost like oh you know i want to see i want to see this again you know to see i want to come to another gig i want to come to another concert i want to experience this you know i i i've kind of i've got a desire for more here because I think the worst thing that you can do is your gig is going really well uh, and the performance is is great uh, but you actually overdo it so actually play for too long and then people lose interest you know and people start leaving the venue or, le or le you know that kind of thing and and you know and the, their attention span basically span 
uh, kind of uh, uh, ends okay so i think that's really important so that's that would be my first advice is definitely decide on the length of your set uh, and stick to it advice number two uh, would be uh, to then prepare your set list so effectively once you've decided on the length or you've been told the length that you are going to be playing uh, you obviously need to then write a set list now writing a set list um, is not just a simple you know act as at least in in my view of just oh yeah let's just whack some songs together you know saying and with, with like no uh, thinking behind it oh yeah we'll just play song one to ten from our record for example and and that's it and that's what we're gonna do and sometimes you know that might work because your songs one to ten on the record if you've obviously uh put a lot of thought into the order of these songs on on an album or or, or whatever it is you you have it it may be that actually uh, those songs do, do make sense sort of uh, in, in succession if they are played one after the other and, and that they make say sense on the record and equally they will make sense live okay so if that is actually the case then that's great you know and and, and, up, and absolutely stick to that however if that is not the case or perhaps you're playing uh, songs from different records not just from one record things like that uh, then I think that you should be paying attention to your set list and your order of the songs okay so it's a little bit like writing a story you know anything any kind of experience that you want people to uh to 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 co to you know come out uh with from from your gig or from your concert and uh, i think that you need to think about the beginning the middle and then the end uh so effectively you know how how do you start a gig so for example you know um uh, I've uh, always been kind of, I, you know, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, I think, said this, that, uh, this is this famous saying that, you know, start, start, start from like a, you know, fund, thunderstorm and kind of, and, and then introduce the, the, view, the viewer, you know, <laughs> to, that, to that kind of thing. So for, for me, um, you know, I always, I think I've always been a bit of a fan of that sort of approach that, you know, uh, make make an impact you know straight away you know make an impact whatever you do it's kind of your first few seconds that you kind of grab the audience's attention are very very important because that moment is like they would be like oh you know what is this you know this is so good and they will want to stick around and 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 kind of they will want more to see what you've got what else you've got in the bag okay uh, it of course depends on uh, the type of artist that you are and the type of music that you do, for example, because, you know, if you are, say, playing some, I don't know, acoustic songs, that kind of thing, maybe maybe they, la they are all very... Uh, you know subdued or not 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 very kind of in your face and that, then maybe you want to create the atmosphere that you want to kind of start really kind of uh slow and maybe build it up okay so that's another approach and i'm not saying that this is a wrong approach i think it all depends on the type of music that you do so in today's video what i also wanted to do is actually use real examples from my own work you know when when i actually uh uh, played uh, one one of the best gigs that I've ever played, and there's another video on that, uh, and uh, with what I've that I've done. I'm going to link uh, leave a link in the description, not in the description, sorry, but on the top of my screen, I think here, um, and uh, effectively, I'm just going to share with you uh, what what I've what, what I've done, and 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 the first example from this type of thing is about the beginning of the uh, the actual gig. So uh, this is when my band at the time called Sonnet 13, we played with a, a big band. That was the gig was in Poland and we played with a big uh, a punk band from Poland called Deserter and we were the main support band. OK, so we prepared in advance all these different things that like what we were going to do when we get on the stage. OK, um, so so effectively, the first thing that we had was an intro. So. Uh, something that we've recorded in the studio uh, and the bass player Fraser at the time uh, he he's also a poet he he uh, wrote a, a poem that he effectively uh, uh, 
you know, uh, uh, read out uh, or recited in, in on on top of that song on the on top of that, that music and the music itself is just the bass and the guitar kind of play, again playing quite quite gentle you know there's like a little bit of a guitar solo but like not not very crazy and the bass uh, sort of uh, uh, basic notes being played and and he sort of recites that uh, poem of his on top of that so what we decided to do in that on that particular occasion is to uh, play that effectively as an intro uh, introduction to our set and that would then allow us to uh, sort of stay backstage initially so the audience would just see the stage stage with the lights on and the intro would play and then we would kind of get onto the stage so the drummer would get on first because he had to sort of make sure that he's got every had everything ready you know set up on his drum kit but then me and the bass player would kind of run onto the stage just as the intro was was kind of uh ending and then we would kind of come in with the first sort of note of the riff you know so that that would kind of had a big impact okay so let me actually show you um because I've I've actually got the, a video from here which I actually uh, recorded on my GoPro at the time, so I'm just going to show you what that actually looked like in practice. <laughs> Okay, so you can you can clearly see this is this is exactly what I'm uh, what I'm talking about here. The next thing that I would like to mention is what do you want to say to your audience? You know, if if anything, and I think that you, it's good to kind of have a think about it in advance and actually even rehearse it. You know, so effectively when you get to the to that stage and and all the nerves kick in and and you know whether any stage fright kicks in, whatever. If you've got this got if you've got this rehearsed. Uh, it will it will work on the day you know but you need to prepare for it so so you know write down prepare what you want to say when you want to say that kind of thing um and you know and, and i'm just going to show you now the moment when the intro sort of the the um, first sort of instrumental part that we've just played sort of ends and then the band goes into that kind of crescendo type of thing and at that moment i kind of introduce the band to the audience and that was something that was a very very kind of well prepared and designed in advance and something that we've definitely practiced for just just have a look
so do you see what I mean? Uh, effectively, I used that moment, and that was very much rehearsed with the band, to introduce ourselves, to say where we're from. Uh, you know, we've come from 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 the UK, from 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 Manchester. You know that kind of thing. With you know, come to you know, and then I kind of invited people also to join in. You know, in in the fun. You know, in the in the in the mosh pit and that kind of thing. So that I think that's that's kind of key. You know, there the, the are those moments. And and speaking of which, I just wanted to say also that what you need to really think about. That's another really really important thing is the gaps between the songs. Okay, so it's not just uh, it's not just the songs that you play, but it's what happens in between the songs. You know, sometimes you might decide that you want one song to run into another in succession, so there's virtually no gaps, and some bands do that uh, quite successfully. But if you are not one of those bands, and if you actually stop and have a gap in between the songs, make sure that you've figured out what you're going to do during those gaps so i.e you know maybe you want to just replenish i don't know drink some water that's fine and if the entire band does that but i think it would be helpful to figure out if there's anything that you want to say to the audience at that point and if for you know it just might be a simple thank you you know if you see them uh, you know clapping or that kind of thing just say thank you maybe that kind of thing maybe introduce the next song that you know may, maybe that kind of thing so let me just show you an example So that was just a quick thank you, you know, kind of like thanks. But effectively, sometimes that works, and you need also you need to give that a little bit of that time. And I think that's what I did. You could see me there, kind of walking away from the microphone, walking, kind of taking a bit of a stroll on the stage, and that kind of I think allowed the audience to absorb uh, kind of what what they've just you know experienced, you know. So there's like a bit of a you know we've just played really intensely. And that's, oh, it's kind of like a little bit of a breather, like, oh, oh, you know, what's just happened kind of thing, you know? So you need to allow that sometimes, you know? And that's another important thing. Something else that links with that is, I think that you should identify moments for sort of suitable for crowd participation, you know? And what I'm saying by, uh, what I mean by crowd participation, that there's, there's various things that you can you can think of. You know, one of them is dancing, uh, moshing, whatever, you know, that might be. Um, the other one might just be them joining in, and, you know, singing your songs with you if they know them, you know, or even you can teach them, you know, on stage, you know, I've seen that happen, you know, when the band just kind of, you know, say play the chorus in advance, um, you know, allowed people to learn that chorus. Uh, and then the people kind of, and then when they started playing the actual song, people could kind of join in and chant with them and that kind of thing. So, so I don't know, the, the, the main singer would stop singing and allow the crowd to kind of join in that kind of thing. So that's one, one example, uh, you know, anything like so, say clapping, you know, clapping their hands kind of in the air that, uh, you know, uh, and anything like that that you would like uh, your your crowd, your audience to feel the part of the show, the you know the part of the whole thing. Uh, it's I think it's very important that you uh, sort of identify those moments and what in your music even what part of your music lends itself the best to those types of things. So for instance, I'm just going to give you an example in one of the songs that we played here where effectively there's a little bit of a um, a breathing space in the song where the, the drummer basically just sort of plays the bass drum uh, kind of like a, like a steady beat um, and, and that kind of leads itself naturally to sort of hand clapping like this, you know, uh, and, and bass, the bass player and I just played sort of, you know, I just played some open chords and allowed for that sort of um, space uh, you know, for, for, for the people to join in. So let me just show you that. Okay, here it comes. So that's the example when I kind of started, you know, I used that opportunity and that timing, you know, and just kind of started clapping, you know, in the, you know, with my hands. And then the, 
you know the crowd also joined in you know and that's that's really cool and i also said that you know that yeah put your put your hands up in the air you know that kind of thing uh so yeah so that's one example now this is what's going to happen next so we use that gap and we actually purposely rehearse this uh, element of the show for me uh, to be able to say anything that say i wanted to give any recognition acknowledgement so for example and you, i'm going to show you this in a moment it's you know fa fa for me to say thank you to the pro big promoter you know anything like that the, the people who organize the show uh you know the 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 crew the the sound crew the lighting crew that kind of thing you know so anything like that is uh, uh, you know it allowed me that that space was was there for me to effectively uh, articulate that so so that re worked really well just have a look now okay so thank you very much for coming this is when I'm bringing the song back in to do with my guitar riff again. See what I mean, and that kind of go, and and then I, br I we bring the song back in, but effectively it was kind of the drummer and the bass player just playing their part, allowing me to speak to the crowd, to the audience, you know, kind of convey whatever I wanted to say, thank uh, you know the promoter, thank the other bands, you know, so sort of say encourage people to to do some further dancing, things like that, you know, and that was really good, you know, so so effectively I think that you need to be thinking about these things in advance and actually rehearse them. Because then another thing that I wanted to to mention uh, in this in this video today uh, is about rehearsing because this is really key that in your rehearsals when you've decided on a particular show that you'll be playing you know you've decided on your uh, set length you've decided on your set list uh, you know which songs we, you're going to you're going to be playing the next important part is not just to rehearse the, the actual songs whilst that is very important yes to get them right to get tight as a band or whatever but it's also then to rehearse each of these individual moments so they basically they're there uh you know it's like muscle memory so effectively when they happen you know what you're doing you know what you're going to say you know how you're going to act and that kind of thing and um, and and what what i would add to that as, as well is you, you need to be thinking about what you want to look like okay so depending on the band that you're in on on type of music i don't know it's what you want to convey what message you want to convey also with your look your, your appearance so effectively you know are you just gonna be wearing a band t-shirt like i did here with with you know sh i used to play in shorts on at that time you know it was getting really hot and you know in that kind of hardcore and punk uh you know uh scene it, 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 this was fine this was kind of like uh, you know a lot of bands did that and that kind of worked and plus obviously wearing shorts for me on stage allowed me to kind of you know cool myself down because it, 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 it would usually get really warm on stage you know so so effectively that was kind of my way of, of doing it but there was a time when I was in a different band called Manifest and actually the uh, bass player Andy at the time he came up with an idea of all of us having sort of more like a like a uniform almost like a band uniform so we would all wear uh, black short sleeve shirts with our sort of band name on on the sleeve you know uh, as a sort of patch uh, sewn onto um onto onto the sleeve so manifest on the sleeve and that and we all wore that you know and that was then our kind of uh trademark this is how we would perform so it's really important you know i've seen i've seen some bands that have gone into a great length you know of uh you know in in, in terms of kind of making sure that you know they, they all kind of look the part you know that they i don't know some some bands uh you know even would wear costumes or paint faces or you know do all these different things so it depends on your act and what you want to do and how you want to kind of people to perceive you when you're on stage but i think it's really important that you actually think about uh, what you're going to wear and what you're going to uh, look like i think if you basically uh, 
consider all these all these aspects and all these recommendations and you apply them into uh, in, in into your own uh, performance uh, i think i think the the likelihood is that uh, that performance will be very successful for you you know because thinking about these things in advance and actually rehearsing them and rehearsing them well and ensuring that it's all there it really adds uh, to to what what people how people receive you and how sort of people perceive you I suppose and and what people get out of it and I think you know the the better you get at these things uh, the more of a likelihood is that people will want to come and see you again so I really hope that this advice will help uh, those of you who have never uh, played live before and are about to or are preparing for for this or even for the people who have been performing live but perhaps haven't considered some of these things uh, uh, before uh, so uh, if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up uh, please also subscribe to my channel uh, and hit that bell so that way you get notified every time i post a new video and i'll see you in my next video